So I'm just going to start this video by saying that I, Mike Figueredo of The Humanist Report, am suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. Yes, I do, in fact, believe that Orange Man is bad and um, I can't stand him. Like, listening to his voice is um, like nails on a chalkboard for me. However, having said that, uh, we have to admit inconvenient facts. We have to acknowledge that Trump... Even though I think overall he's an idiot when it comes to campaigning, he is at least cognizant of some electoral realities, whereas Joe Biden is oblivious. So what I mean by that is Trump knows what it's going to take for him to defeat Joe Biden. He knows that he just has to make sure that the Democratic base doesn't turn out, is demoralized, and if enough Democratic Party voters stay home, Trump gets a second term. Joe Biden, however, he doesn't necessarily know what it's going to take to make him electorally successful, right? He knows, unlike Hillary Clinton, that you do need to play for really key swing states. You do actually need to make an effort to appeal to people in the Rust Belt. But what he's missing, like Hillary Clinton, is that he thinks that he can win by just convincing enough moderate Republicans to support him. Now, I don't necessarily know if this is the strategy that his team is actually executing, but just watching the DNC convention, it really seemed as if like they brushed aside the left and they were embracing moderate Republicans like John Kasich and Colin Powell. I guess he's a moderate Republican, even though he should be in jail right now for war crimes. But what they're trying to do is go after those suburban voters. I mean, I think that Chuck Schumer laid out this strategy clearly back in 2016. He said, you know, for every leftist that we lose, we'll make it up by getting an extra suburban voter or something like that. Like I'm paraphrasing, but he doesn't understand that his key to success is to energize the base. And he may be a very unlikable figure, not as much as Hillary Clinton, admittedly, but he's got to do that with policy. Just pick any policy, one policy, it's got to be a bold policy and campaign on that non-stop and you can accomplish what you need to. You can get the base excited to come out and vote for you. Now, it may be the case that there's enough anti-Trump voters that they just come out regardless and turn out as high because they want to vote against Donald Trump. But still, the fact that Donald Trump knows the correct strategy, and I'm not sure that Joe Biden knows the right strategy to win, it's worrying to me. So at the RNC speech that Trump gave on night one, he actually explained how he knows that he has more enthusiasm among his base than Joe Biden has among his base. And he admits that Bernie Sanders had more enthusiasm and probably would have been a more formidable opponent. Um, so take a look at what he says here, because I think that Democrats should take this seriously. It's not wrong just because, because Trump is saying it. I mean, I get that Trump lies every two seconds, but what he's saying here, there's some truth to it. Bernie Sanders got taken advantage of, is that okay? By Hillary Clinton, but worse, by the Democrats this time. Because if Pocahontas, Elizabeth Warren, got out of the campaign one day prior to the Super Tuesday vote, Bernie Sanders would have won every single state because Biden won by a little bit. And she took, she didn't do well, but she took thousands and thousands of votes away in each state. If you add just a percentage of those votes back, that means that Bernie would have won easily the nomination. And I'm glad he didn't because he had much more enthusiasm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he would have had a base, a small, much smaller base than ours, but equally, I have to say this, equally as enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. This base doesn't like Joe Biden. They don't like Joe Biden. That's right. I think we're going to get a lot of votes. We did last time. People were surprised, right. primarily because of trade, because I know how other countries take advantage of us, and I understand that. And that's something that Bernie Sanders people really feel because I understand trade. So I think that any Democratic Party strategist would acknowledge that Donald Trump is stupid. He's an idiot. Um, but at least he acknowledges the obvious thing about electoral politics. It's that Democrats only win when turnout is high. Now, he says Trump claims that uh, Bernie lost because Elizabeth Warren was the key factor here, right? She stayed in the race, which led to uh, progressives splitting votes. Obama got everyone else to drop out, and that ultimately is what facilitated the demise of Bernie 2020. I don't necessarily blame Elizabeth Warren or Obama for Bernie's loss. I think that it wasn't too late after Super Tuesday. I think Bernie could have turned it around. So I mostly chalk up Bernie's loss to, you know, 
not being able to adapt to changing circumstances, which is what you have to do. Um, but I do blame Obama to an extent and Elizabeth Warren to a lesser extent. But, you know, the establishment coming out against Bernie Sanders is something that he should have anticipated. So I, I don't necessarily blame Elizabeth Warren so much. But what Trump is doing is he's trying to play the left in a sense and get them angry at corporate Democrats again and like weaponize that anger to get them to not turn out for Joe Biden. Uh, that's what he's trying to do. It's transparent and we shouldn't fall for that. Like if you're in a swing state, you should vote for Joe Biden, obviously, so we can defeat Donald Trump because I don't think another four years of Trump is going to be good for the left. Um, having said that, though, the fact that Trump knows all he has to do is demoralize the Democratic Party base that's dangerous because it's a lot more easier to demoralize a base than it is to get them excited, especially when you're not working with much anyway. Like, ask yourself, what is Joe Biden running on? What is he running on? Like, I think that we know he will handle this pandemic like a grown-up, right? Whereas Trump will probably uh, leave us dealing with it until there's a vaccine. So who knows how long it's going to last if Trump is reelected. So I think at a minimum, Joe Biden is going to handle this like an adult, um, he may handle the economic crisis better than Donald Trump, give less corporate bailouts. But I mean, when you look at Joe Biden's campaign, he's not really running on any key policy. I mean, all the excitement in the 2020 Democratic Party primary was around candidates that had something that they put front and center. Like Bernie, it was Medicare for all and a Green New Deal. Um, you know, Andrew Yang, it was UBI. Elizabeth Warren, it was her, you know, uh, wealth tax. With Tulsi Gabbard, it was ending wars with Marianne Williamson. It was reparations. Like, every candidate who had, like, these little mini cult followings, it was because they had one policy front and center. All Joe Biden has to do to excite the base is uh, put up something. I don't know what it is. Like, it's going to have to be bold, right? Marijuana legalization. Uh, Medicare for all. Like, he can literally even lie to us. But if you don't have some policy going forward and you're just running on not being Trump, I mean, this was a provable failure of a strategy. Hillary proved that. So why are you doing this again? If Hillary couldn't do it, what makes you think you're going to be able to do it? Like I get the circumstances are different, but you have to adapt. Like you have to offer voters something. And that's why there isn't very much enthusiasm for Joe Biden. And I don't think Democrats realize how big of an issue that is. Like they are just banking on people being anti-Trump enough to turn out and vote. But usually voters don't vote against someone. They vote for someone and for something. Now, Trump also says here, had Warren dropped out, Bernie would have won the nomination. And quote, I'm glad he didn't because he had much more enthusiasm and this base doesn't like Joe Biden. And that's the thing. Like if you ask someone who is voting for Joe Biden why they're voting for Joe Biden, their answer, nine times out of 10, I'm assuming, is uh, he's not Donald Trump. Okay. I worry that we're not learning the lessons that 2016 taught us. You have to offer voters something, anything, because simply not being Donald Trump is not good enough. It's just not good enough. Now, as I stated earlier, you know, if Hillary couldn't pull this off, then what makes you think Biden is going to pull this off? Well, uh, yeah, I wonder that now, because as journalist Walker Bragman points out, at this point in the race in 2016, Hillary was actually outperforming Joe Biden in all of these states, with the exception of Florida. But in Wisconsin, North Carolina, Ohio, I mean, he's doing worse than Hillary Clinton. And this is not a good sign. And we have to assume that Donald Trump will get a post-convention bump. So I bring all of this up like I'm talking about this because I don't think that Democrats are taking this seriously enough. Like, it's clear Joe Biden thinks... The left is going to turn out like the base is excited to vote for him. Non-voters are going to actually get off their asses and support him, unlike in 2016. I don't think it is that easy. Like, I don't think it's that simple. And I think that they're making the same mistake again. They're walking into a disaster, not even realizing it, being cocky once again. And that's terrifying. But the good news is that it's not too late to turn it around. Like, November is a couple of months away. So they can actually still fight to turn out the base, right? Make an active effort to encourage people to vote by exciting them with something. Like, Joe Biden's climate change policy 
it's not as bad as it was in the primary. He adopted a lot of elements from Bernie's platform. Like, of course, it's not as good as Bernie or even Elizabeth Warren, but it is better than it was. He should be putting that front and center so every single young person knows his climate change policy is good. It's an improvement over during the primary. But he's not doing that. And that's really worrying to me. I mean, at the DNC convention, there was this underlying implication that the responsibility wasn't necessarily on Joe Biden to get out the vote, but it was on voters to get out the vote. Like non-voters, you know, they're they're bad people. Um, if you vote third party, you're a bad person. Now is not the time. This election is too serious. But I mean, if Joe Biden continues to run on nothing, you can't blame people for that. You have to blame Joe Biden. He's the one where he's running this campaign and it's on you to defeat Donald Trump. You are the only individual who stands between Donald Trump and another four years in this White House. So if you fuck this up, everyone on the left is going to be rightly furious with you. So do something. You have time. Turn it around. Now, I'm not delusional enough to think that he's watching this, but I mean, you have to offer people something. Come out swinging in favor of weed legalization. Hell, he doesn't even have to theoretically like introduce some new policy change. He is running on restoring net neutrality. At least that's what he pointed to. Like he would, you know, uh, appoint an FCC chair who supports net neutrality, who would undo the damage that a GPI caused. Just doing that would actually win you over a lot of new votes. But you can't just run on nothing. Like you can't put nothing into the ether and expect to be rewarded for it. You have to run on something, anything. And he's not. He's not doing that. Attacking Donald Trump can only get you so far. Now, maybe it is going to be the case that he beats Donald Trump. Like, this election is already a weird election. Like, the circumstances in this country are unprecedented. So maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, right? But what I can guarantee is that his chances going up against Donald Trump would be better if he actually had a policy that would get young people and non-voters excited enough to come out to vote. At least try, do something, run on, defund the police, anything to excite people. But if you don't and you lose, then that's on you. That's not on the voters, the non-voters or the third party voters. That's on you for not doing enough to earn their votes and win them over.